All right, just got back from a week on the road um, with our brand new Can-Am Maverick X3 XRS with Smart Shocks. This is a brand new 2021 model, and we made three different stops on this trip. Uh, let me get this thing unloaded and uh, go over all that with you. All right, so we've got our X3 unloaded, and uh, let me first uh, review with you the few things that we added from Cognito Motorsports. The first is uh, their um, opening doors. And if you notice, there's a, a button on the outside, and what they're planning on doing is adding uh, the ability with uh, these uh, two bolt holes here to add a frame um, where they can have a race net uh, on here and what this button does is allow you to open from the outside um, which is uh, kind of interesting I don't know of anybody else that really has that but uh, that's what this button is for on the inside you've got another latch it's easier for me just to show you from uh, inside here this uh, opens the door um, so you can see it's moving uh, the button as well. So if there was a net here, you'd be able to uh, open from either side. Um, and that's what that is. Now, um, this also has a uh, strut on here, which kind of helps keep the door open. And you do have uh, an option as well for uh, some bags, lower bags that are made by PRP. Um, that's an, a, a, an additional add-on. Um, so these uh, doors work well for us um, in Johnson Valley. I again, we did not take it lightly on this car over the last week. Johnson Valley is brutal. We did all kinds of gnarly rock trails and uh, no problems with any of this stuff here. Um, next thing uh, from Cognito that we did add is uh, their tire carrier. Um, this bolts on to the um cage mount which we really can't see there's four four bolts on the, each side of the cage in the rear and they take up the two inners on both sides so that uh, is how that is bolted to the cage um and then uh so most of your aftermarket cages will work through this as well and a nice thing it's got dual latches on this you uh click uh both sides and then this will lift up We've got a 33 inch tire on there now, but uh, it will also hold a 35, which is pretty cool. That's a, that's a big tire back here. And again, we ran uh, really fast through the desert, big gnarly whoops, and also uh, you know rock crawling and everything. No problem at all with this. Um, next thing here is their uh, rear bed mount. It comes with a uh, um, the mount here um, as well as a, a bag that you can put in here and on the sides you can use this for like an air compressor or a jack um, which is kind of nice separate from the uh, storage uh, as well so that worked uh, really nice for us it's it's excellent to have a tire carrier where you can actually raise it up and utilize the space underneath the uh, spare tire um, the only downside to this setup is, as you can see, um, you're not going to be looking out your rear view mirror um, unless all you want to see is a, a, a tire back there. So that's the downside, but I'll, I'll pay that uh, price to be able to have a spare tire on the car where I can lift it up, get it out of the way, and have a nice amount of storage in the bed. So after we left Cognito, we went straight to Johnson Valley. And Johnson Valley is uh, home to King of the Hammers. We were doing some pre-renting with a couple of racers, and I wanted to see how this car would handle um, in, in kind of the rough uh, desert there and also in the rocks. This is a Smart Shocks car. So uh, in addition uh, to the three manual settings they have, which is Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus, so that's all manual this also has nine different sensors on the car so normal sensor that can handle uh you know braking acceleration cornering uh weightlessness so if you're if you're jumping all that kind of stuff um 
but the the really cool part on this vehicle is the 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 smart part of it really comes down to the sensors on uh, every one of the corners now this sensor here is is new just for this car and you can see it's attached to the arm uh, the trailing arms are a little bit different but uh, up front here we've got this and what that measures is your um, uh, wheel position so how far it's uh, dropping out or compressing and also the velocity of that tire as it's coming back up through the stroke so the brains in the system can make adjustments based on every corner what's actually happening that's uh, pretty uh, pretty advanced and uh, pretty cool technology um, so since we were in Johnson Valley um, I and we were going to do some rock crawling this comes stock with uh, 30 inch big horns that's just not going to do for rock crawling so I went with a 33 inch ITP coyote tire um, and uh, that gives you a, a little bit more ground clearance and uh, you know what's really nice on the Can-Ams is I didn't touch the clutch whatsoever um, you can go 90 miles an hour uh, with these tires and also back down and rock crawl in low range with absolutely no side effects that I've been able to determine. So uh, hats off to Can-Am for having a great clutch that handles that big of a swing of, of tires without you having to monkey around with the, uh, the clutch at all. So as far as the handling of the car in the desert, um, I was uh, pretty happy with how it handled uh, Johnson Valley. Um, the whoops there are made mostly of decomposed granite and um, you know sand, uh, so th they can get fairly big, um, but they they aren't sharp like you would find uh, like we did find later in the week uh, over in the hard packed desert near Phoenix um, so a little bit different there but uh, it was handling the whoops fairly nice there uh, in comfort mode it did feel a little boaty um, which uh, I, that makes sense to me uh, uh, I just pushed it up into sport or sport plus and uh, that tightened things up a little bit and uh, it handled uh, all, all the whoops and G outs and all that kind of stuff really well in Johnson Valley. So pretty impressed there. Um, from a rock crawling standpoint, I, I just put it in comfort mode so it's not beating me up quite as much. And that's really nice to smooth out the jarring and everything you feel. And I wasn't uh, flopping, uh, you know, when I'm coming up and over rocks. So it did hold the car up uh, real nice as well. Um, so this is the XRS model. It's not the RC model that's made for rock crawling. So the other piece we did um, just to be able to not beat the car up so much is we added uh, factory UTV uh, skids and rock sliders. Now um, the skid that's on it isn't really that bad but in Johnson Valley you really do beat up these rockers quite a bit and that's just plastic the RC model of the X3 has these built in but not the RS so we really uh, were happy that added the, that on before we went to Johnson Valley and beat it up in the rocks um, and the other nice thing is in the rear on those factory ETV skids you can see there's an aluminum panel there under the rear of it and that's an extra little bit you can have them add that gives you a little bit more backing on the UHMW skid plate and uh, we went with half inch so that's even stronger than their three eights um, but if you're going to do gnarly rock crawling like you see in johnson valley highly recommend this stuff um, the other piece that the rc has over the rs is um, higher clearance radius links again this is the rs that just has straight links back here and if you notice uh, the bottoms of these are are no longer stock uh, we went over some big rocks and some crazy trails out there and I bent those up pretty uh, pretty quickly N Not that big of a surprise because uh, really this is not their rock crawling model, but uh, uh, Phil Blurton was kind enough to uh, loan us these uh, straight ones for the rest of the trip and uh, it uh, 
it, that was the only issue with the uh, suspension is just bending these radius links and there's a lot of uh, companies out there making high clearance uh, radius links for these some of them will actually um, take these bottom two and arch them both to get you even more clearance um, the the factory ones for the rc only adjust uh, this lower one to be a little bit higher so after spending two days in johnson valley we uh, loaded up and headed over to phoenix to work with shock therapy and uh, since that was going to be just uh, desert without any rock crawling, we went ahead and swapped back to the 30-inch uh, uh, Bighorns just to be able to see the, the, uh, how the vehicle handled the uh, desert in more of a, a, a stock setting. Obviously, I'm not completely stock because I've got the, the skid plate doors and tire carrier on here, but for the most part, it, it's a stock vehicle. So we went out uh, with the guys from Shock Therapy, went out to Boulder's OHV area, and this is a pretty heavily used area in the desert, um, and it's real uh, hard pack. They do have some washes and stuff that's a little bit different, but the hard pack produces um, some whoops that are really sharp, and um, what we found in those is the, the Smart Shock system um, it, it really didn't like the sharp feel of those uh, whoops and it ramped up the compression pretty quick, even in comfort mode. So um, really hard for a manufacturer to create a shock package that's going to work just superior everywhere um, so that's what we were working with shock therapy on is figuring out what we needed to change and uh, um, you know come up with a package for specific for this car for the terrain i like to do which is mostly southwest type desert i do some trail riding but also dunes desert and rock crawling so um after testing it at boulders and also uh, what they call the geyser loop um, which has some really uh, pretty fast g out sections we headed back to the uh, shop there at uh, shock therapy and they got to work so we headed back to shock therapy and they uh, um, first wanted to uh, work on the shocks so um, what they did is we went ahead and put their uh, dual rate spring kit on the uh, on the car and uh, This is a true dual rate setup with an upper and lower spring and crossover ring um, And then they got inside the uh, shock and changed the the uh, bypass tube uh, To their own one which is uh, their proprietary uh, setup and it's got more uh, of the crossover holes uh, that uh, affect the um, uh, bump stages and also they changed the uh, the shim stacks in it to be um, what they um, would give us a little bit more plushness um, and a little bit more uh, compression as well uh, so broaden out what all this vehicle can do in the rough terrain um, and then we headed right back out uh, went to uh, boulders again and noticed a huge difference um, and kind of the cool thing about this is we uh, since I had this tire carrier we were able to not only run without the tire up here but also with it because th th it makes a huge difference putting 60 pounds in the back leverage wise because you're sitting on top of the rear axle back here with that weight and some of it's beyond the, the rear axle so that's a big leverage point for 60 pounds to be there instead of adding 60 pounds inside the, in the middle of the car between the wheelbase that's a big leverage point so i run a lot like that and i wanted to see how it was with and without that tire there um, so big difference much more plushness um, in the uh, sharp whoops you find at boulder hv area which was really cool so from there we went to uh, the geyser loop and ran that real hard and we're happy with the results of that so went back to uh, shock therapy and then they added a bunch more stuff to the uh, uh, the car as well um, on it we have added their billet steering rack 
which is a piece of art. Um, this uh, we've had on the vehicles before, and it is awesome. Uh, very stout, and um, you don't get any feedback from it at all. Really, really nice piece. Um, in addition, we added uh, front and rear uh, adjustable uh, sway bars on this. It's kind of hard to see, but on the front, you've got three different settings on the sway bar. So the middle setting would be uh, near stock. And if you put it out here with more leverage, that's a, a softer sway. Now this vehicle has a uh, sway control with the shocks in, in the smart shock system. So what I wanted to do is loosen that up a little bit up front uh, with the manual sway bar and see if the computer um, and the shocks can handle some of the uh, sway control duties. Um, in addition to that, uh, we added their um, limit straps. Uh, this is a super slick way to uh, do your adjustable uh, limit straps. This is a collar they add on. You can do this while the shocks are on the car or if they're off and it's adjustable. You see here they've got this uh, clevis on here which can adjust as your straps stretch over time. You can continue to adjust to the right settings. Uh, in addition, we've got their uh, tie rods on the car and in the back we've got uh, their adjustable uh, sway bar and again we've got the um, limit straps and uh, took it back out after all that stuff and uh, did the geyser loop and they actually brought their uh, helicopter out and we did some filming uh, from the helicopter of the the vehicle working through uh, the geyser loop and uh, let me tell you what uh, pretty pretty impressed with uh, everything we've done with this car so far um, we're kind of handling the improvements we're making to this car or the customizations we're making to this uh, in stages so we can keep using it I, I don't want to have the, the uh, vehicle down for a long period of time so it's nice to be able to do your customizations and little pieces like this so you can keep running out and, and using it having fun with it and also testing out these pieces as we do them so that was our trip so far uh, a week on the road and uh, very successful so far we're just loving the technology this car has to offer uh, with the smart shocks and uh, the 195 horsepower is uh, is awesome and uh, great clutch on this thing we're going to be making some more uh, changes to it as uh, time goes by here and uh, you know get it customized just the way we want but uh, so far we're thrilled with uh, what we've done so far looking to get back out there as soon as possible